Are you ready to launch your own ClickFunnels store but not sure where to begin? Don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, we're going to run through an overview of the store, what each page can do, and how you can start from a framework to craft your perfect store designed to help you sell smarter, not harder. Let's jump right in. I'm here in a fresh ClickFunnels workspace, and we can see a few apps here on the left-hand side, one of them being Store. Now, if you don't have Store installed, you can head over to the App section, select Store, and then add it to your list of apps. With the Store installed, let's go ahead and tap on Store, and then click Overview. From here, we can customize the Store and access Store settings. Right below, we have a notification window alerting us to set up payments. And then below that, we have product setup, so creating a product manually or adding it from Zendrop. And then last, you have stats on all sales, which would update as sales come through. Let's take a look at the default store. Go ahead and tap Customize Store at the top, and we will be loaded into the editor. Now, here in the editor, we can make adjustments to anything on our store pages. Speaking of those pages, they're listed here on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and do a quick overview of each page. First up is your storefront, and this is your first impression to make with customers. Here on the default storefront, we have a collection which is a unique element within the editor of the store. And as a side note, if you're unfamiliar with how the editor works, we have an intro to ClickFunnels course that goes over all of the details within the editor, so be sure to review this video if you want to fully understand the ins and outs of the editor. All right, next up is products. So if someone's browsing and taps on a specific product, this is gonna be the page they land on. The boxes with general information are dynamic, meaning whatever product the customer taps on, the product page will dynamically adjust to display the correct information. Collections is the next page, and the primary purpose of collections is to improve the product organization and browsing for your customers. So rather than listing all of your products on one page, you can group them in logical ways. Think of collections as categories. Next up is cart, and the cart page functions like a traditional e-commerce shopping cart. It mirrors the familiar retail experience customers expect from online stores, and obviously this differs a little bit from funnels, which are ideal from single offer sales journeys. For a full explanation on the add to cart feature, check out our dedicated video on it. Then we have the checkout page. This is pretty straightforward. This is of course where customers will fill in their information to check out with either a single product or a bundle within their cart. And then of course we have the order confirmation page. This is gonna be the page customers will be redirected to once they successfully make a purchase. And then last we have upsell. The upsell page is going to be a post-purchase offer page shown after a customer completes their initial checkout in the store. Unlike in funnels where upsells are part of the checkout sequence, store upsells appear after the order has been confirmed, giving you one last opportunity to increase the order value. All right, so you could spend some time going through each page and making it exactly to your liking, or you can give yourself a great starting point by importing a framework. Frameworks are pre-built business setups that can include multiple components like a site, a store, funnels, automations, products, and more, all bundled into a single importable package. Now, a great resource to find frameworks is gonna be frameworkslibrary.com. Here, you're gonna find a variety to browse through, review, and figure out which framework fits your branding best. I'm gonna go ahead and select Kelly's Kitchen as it has a pre-built storefront, 12 different products via Zendrop integration, as well as a handful of other useful components. All I have to do is tap on Claim This Framework and then select the workspace I want to import it into. Once selected, we can wait for the framework to be installed. Now, once your framework installs, you can apply the theme that's set up with the framework. This includes all of the page layouts of the framework, as well as the style, which includes the colors, buttons, fonts, and other design elements that go into the branding. I'll apply the theme included, but if you want to learn all about themes and styles, we have an in-depth video reviewing everything related to them linked in the description. With the framework installed and the theme applied, let's now go ahead and take a look at our new storefront. Obviously, things are looking very different, and we have a polished store branded as Kelly's Kitchen. All of the pages are now flushed out, and the idea here is that we can replace assets a lot easier than starting from scratch. Okay, I mentioned before when selecting the framework that it has 12 products it comes with, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. I'll head back out of the editor and then tap on products at the top from the sidebar, and now we can see all of our imported products here. 
Let's click on one of those existing products, and within the details, we can see it has a name, description, and images, followed by pricing and shipping. There are purchase actions, so things like digital asset, course, or community access after the sale. Variants have been added as well, and SEO and sharing settings. So whether you're creating a new product or pulling something from Zendrop, like in this example, you can edit the products to make your store unique and branded your way. Before we jump away from products, I wanna to touch on the right side here as well. There are some important statuses of the product. At the top, you have sales channel visibility. So whether this product can show up in your store or your customer center, and below that, we have organization. So you can use tags to group and organize items. And then there's also collections, which is a perfect way to categorize products. Now that more or less covers everything within products. And then we have a perfect segue right into collections as I wanna dive a little deeper into them. Okay, from the sidebar, let's tap on products again. And this time we'll select collections. Now let's go through how to set up a collection. Tap create collection, and then think of what kind of collection or category would be fitting for the products you have. For this example, let's say we want to run a promotion on everything that's under $50. So we need to put every product that falls within that parameter into this collection. How do we go about that? Well, first, let's go ahead and give it a name and description. You can also give it an image as well. Tapping on Create Collection will give us additional information to fill out. First is the collection type, so we can decide whether we want to manually add products or automatically add them based on parameters. Let's tap automatically, and then we can set that $50 parameter up. But you can see from the dropdown, there are several different filters you can choose from to really hone in on exactly how you want your collection to be. I'll go ahead and select price amount, and then from the second dropdown, select less than, and then manually input 50. You can additionally add in more filters to curate the exact list you're looking to build if you so choose. Once you've created the applicable filters, below you'll see collection sort method, which is how you'll control which products show in what order. I'll go ahead and select A to Z for alphabetical order, but there are plenty of options to choose from here as well. The last section here is SEO and sharing, and these settings will help search engines categorize and rank your page, as well as help social networks display relevant content to their users. If you wanna customize this, tap edit and feel free to fill out the details. All right, so now once I tap update collection, we will see all of the products that fall into the parameters that we set up auto populate within the products tab. All right, and it worked. We can now see all of those products as well as where they are currently able to be sold at. All right, let's head back to our main collections page and now we can see our newly created collection within the list. For this example though, I wanna add a few more collections. Thanks to the power of editing, I can simply fast forward and boom, there we go. We have two more collections built. Okay, the last thing I wanna to touch on before we jump into the editor and see our products and collections in action. Here, we can go into the inventory and there are a number of settings that can be adjusted. Obviously, these products are being fulfilled through Zendrop, but if I were managing the products manually, I can track inventory here, I can decide if I wanna to continue to sell after going out of stock, so on and so forth. So if you're keeping inventory, if you're tracking and managing, it might be a good idea to familiarize yourself with the options available. With our products sorted and a collection made, let's jump into the editor and take a closer look at the pages. Again, we have our intro to ClickFunnels course covering the ins and outs of the editor. So if you have any questions, feel free to review that video linked in the description. First, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the products page. We'll come back to the storefront in a second. The first thing you'll notice is this universal block, and if any changes are made, those changes will be applied everywhere. For example, if I were to come into this row and adjust the width of the page, every product page would be adjusted. I also wanna make the Add to Cart button this green from the theme that we applied when installing Kelly's Kitchen into our account. If you make any changes, be sure to save. Outside of the block, we have our header with the Add to Cart button. Now, let's say you don't want Add to Cart as a feature, you would remove the icon and then go back into the block and then replace the Add to Cart element with something like the Order Form element. I like the Add to Cart feature when it comes to the store, so I'll leave it as is and then save everything. Speaking of the cart, let's take a look at that before collections. Almost everything in here can be edited in some way. So let's say I wanna rename the cart, and then change just some of these colors around. 
Obviously, if I were making this a real store, I would be a little bit more conscious about what I'm choosing, but for this example, we can make it nice and colorful. Now at the top here, I can toggle between how the cart looks with items in it versus being empty, and we can edit between the two. Next up are collections. So this is going to be the page where someone would see if they're viewing a specific collection, like the under $50 one that we set up earlier. If I go into the settings, we can see the filter by collection toggle. Turning this on defaults to the current collection name, so if a customer clicked on something that took them to the products under $50, they would see the correct collection displayed. The same applies with any other collection created like the utensils one. Over here on the right hand side, we have our collection of collections. I know, it can be a little tricky, so bear with me here. Think of these as categories, and it shows a list like this because they are dynamic, which changes based on the collections I've created. Now let's say I want to edit the way these products are displayed. If I go in and edit one of these products, it'll adjust for all of them. I want to add some borders to this, so I'll go into this element and then toggle borders on. I like number three here. All right, perfect. So we have our collection page set up, but if we go back to our storefront, we can actually see there's no way to get to the collections. We have the products listed here, but let's go ahead and add an element above and get the collections added. And maybe this isn't the best place for it if it were my real store, but I want to showcase how you can add collections easily. So I'll add the element here and then I'll type in collection and we can see product collections here. I'll tap on it to drop it in and now we can go into the settings to adjust it. Let's keep three items per row, but I'll drop this to six total collections per page shown. Now, if I go into this first element of this collection, I can add a product name, and now if we preview the page, we can see our added names of collections here. Of course, we probably want to add a title above, something like Shop Our Exclusive Collections. Okay, this looks good as an example. If I click here on products under $50, it'll now show us that specific collection, so everything's working correctly. So that's most of the pages. If I preview the storefront again, I can click into one of these products and then it'll show me the product page. I can add it to my cart and then pop this out so we can see the small adjustments we made there as well. And then if I tap on checkout from my cart, it'll show us the checkout page with the summary on the right and the checkout details on the left. Now, I haven't set up payments yet in this account, so it doesn't show me this, but once you set up payments, it will appear normally. And if I want to preview the order confirmation page, I'll go down here and we can see that that's also working normally. So that's the basics of the store from top to bottom. Let's go ahead and finish talking about upsells. Upsells are basically OTOs for your store, and this is what an upsell looks like. You typically want to make your upsell page relatively generic because it's always going to change based on parameters. Let's jump out of the editor now and take a look at store upsells. Head back and then tap on store from the left hand side, but this time select upsells from the dropdown. Upsells are basically like sequences, so after the checkout we might want to redirect to a funnel or a collection. Let's look at the collection option since we've been talking about collections in this video. In the store upsell details, let's name this the featured upsell. From the dropdown, let's go ahead and select a collection we want to show a product from for the upsell. I'm not too worried about the specific URL of the upsell, but you can set that here if you so choose. Resell just means if they've purchased an item in the past, it's still eligible to be shown as an upsell. I'm going to go ahead and keep this off as I want to make the upsell something that they've never purchased before. And then last here, if we want this upsell to be live, we can toggle that on as well. Below is where we trigger for the upsell to show so we can set filters from the dropdowns. And for this example, let's say purchase product is the kitchen trash can. In this case, an upsell would be presented from the featured collection that they've not previously purchased when they buy the trash can. So a perfect example would be someone buying a large spoon utensil, and then we could set up a large fork to complement each other. Upsells are perfect for pairing items, so think consciously when creating upsell opportunities. Okay, so that about wraps it up. To recap, we started with an overview of each page in the store. Then we imported a framework with a complete store and Zendrop integrated products. 
After that, we walked through product details like how to add or edit products. Collections were after that, and we built a collection of products under $50. Then we hopped into the store editor, we made adjustments to different pages, and then finally we looked at the upsells page. We showed how to set one up, and then how they can be utilized to increase average cart value. If you have any questions regarding the store or ClickFunnels in general, feel free to leave a comment below and we will be happy to follow up with you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next walkthrough.